programmers are accelerating the demise of their own industry. But there's a lawsuit that might change everything. The 20th largest job in America is being a software developer. Globally, there's up to 27 million people employed in the field. And seriously, common wisdom for at least 15 years now has been that programming will pay well and it will provide significant job security. But Sam Altman, a founder and current CEO of OpenAI, puts it well. With a lot of confidence from almost most people, you would have heard, you know, first it's going to come for the blue collar jobs working in the factories, truck drivers, whatever. Then it will come for the kind of like the low skill white collar jobs. Then the very high skill, like really high IQ uh, white collar jobs, like a programmer or whatever. And then very last of all, and maybe never, it, it's going to take the creative jobs. And it's really gone exactly, the, and it's going exactly the other direction. Chat GPT can write code. It's not perfect. Often, it's not even good. But this is a bit of a Wright Brothers moment in the history of AI. The age of the internet has become the status quo. We're starting to see the effects of what is going to come next. This actually started last year with GitHub Copilot, a tool that, like ChatGPT, was developed by OpenAI, which allows programmers to autocomplete pieces of code as they're writing them. It's been incredibly useful. What programmer wouldn't use a tool like that to increase their productivity? Well, for starters, this guy, but we'll get back to him. Through the use of this tool, programmers have managed to set a self-destructive precedent. Auto-completed code is considered transformative, and so falls under fair use, and isn't subject to copyright, right? But American copyright law dates all the way back to this book, written in 1740. The basic concepts invented by these fellas are actually still dictating how we currently use artificial intelligence. But let's skip 300 years of dusty copyright history and get straight to the bit that concerns us, fair use. You might remember this term from the YouTube adpocalypse. But what it boils down to is this. You can use somebody else's copyrighted material, their intellectual property, if your new material is non-profit, educational, or transformative in nature. So when GitHub Copilot finishes your lines of code, it might be pulling from information in its hundreds of gigabytes of training data, in which you're supposed to attribute the original author. So, is this new piece of code that Copilot has written really just advanced plagiarism put through a complex machine learning algorithm? Well, that is exactly what this new class action lawsuit alleges. In an interview with The Verge, Matthew Butterick, who filed the lawsuit against Microsoft and OpenAI, called it software piracy on an unprecedented scale. He then went on to say, I think it's really simple. AI systems are not magical black boxes that are exempt from the law. And the only way we're going to have a responsible AI is if it's fair and ethical for everyone. So the owners of these systems need to remain accountable. He even compares it to Napster and how new technology seems to skirt the edges of what is legal. By training on data without permission and then monetizing it, perhaps OpenAI is playing a dangerous game. This appears to be the first true lawsuit of its kind against companies utilizing copyrighted material in their AI training data. But even if successful, this lawsuit is going to take time to have any sort of effect. And in this interim period, the precedent is being quickly set. Maybe the speed at which technology is advancing is simply too fast for the regulation to keep up. Not to mention, what government wants to be the ones who legislate against AI, potentially positioning themselves to be outcompeted by those who don't? It's a tricky situation. GitHub states affirmatively that training machine learning models on publicly available data is considered fair use across the machine learning community. There are even arguments that through using these increasingly advanced autocomplete tools, we're hampering the learning of future programmers. But will that even matter if AI takes over programming completely in the future? How far off could that be? Software development is a high barrier to entry job. It requires a lot of training. This means that 
there's huge incentive to automate it. Microsoft is a major investor in OpenAI, and it spends billions on high-skill labor. Which means that there's immense incentive to automate their developers and highest paid people first. They cost the most. A few years ago, did anybody think that programming would be one of the first jobs AI puts under threat? Let alone all the discussions on art and creativity. While all the legal stuff is happening, programmers are still using Copilot to complete thousands of projects, and all of that code is being cataloged in GitHub servers. In theory, they could monitor everything, down to the individual keystroke. That's the perfect dataset for automating coding. And not only are programmers contributing to it willingly, they're paying to use it. It's a win-win for GitHub, Microsoft, OpenAI. So that begs the question a little bit. How is it that OpenAI can be a non-profit? Or is it a company? Why is it working together with GitHub? And what does Microsoft have to do with all of this? For a company named OpenAI, there's actually a huge amount of closed information in this story. In the next video, we'll be going into a deep dive on the company, the key players, and how they're going to completely change the most lucrative part of Google's trillion dollar portfolio. If you don't want to miss that, make sure to subscribe and stay notified so that you can get the latest in AI news.